Hey guys, this is Mike uh, from Brand24. Uh, this is live stream devoted towards uh, digital mar marketing in 2019. Um, uh, we'll wait uh, some time to get some people on board. Hey man. <laughs> um, okay, some some people starting to to come here. Uh, let me just uh, share the live stream on my Facebook and Twitter. Uh, just a moment. Mm. Not sure if this is the best time during the day because people are mostly at work. But let's give it a try. Will be a lot of people will. Uh, use the live stream and uh, just uh, watch this in the time of the, their convenience so all right uh, let me just copy here and we're i guess we're done okay just post it on facebook mm. just post on twitter and we're good to go ready people Hey, uh, hey, Cesare. <laughs> I can see that uh, the video, uh, the photograph and video group is is really strong. So it's it's even joining live streams devoted to digital marketing. How cool is that? All right, almost done with the Twitter promo. I guess. All right, we have 12 people here already. So again, feel free to ask any questions re uh, related to digital marketing. Uh, and yeah. Okay, the first question, uh, our goals as a company in 2019. Actually, our goals in 2019 are pretty much public um, through a manager stock option program. Uh, you can find details uh, on the domain. Let me share the address right now. You can find the full documents, reports, financials, everything here. And you can also find some, some of the uh, goals uh, for the top management within the company. Um, uh, yeah. All, all the goals related to revenue. You know, overall goal is to become a leader in the space of media monitoring, a uh, global leader, obviously, because we are already pretty popular in Poland. So to do that, uh, I would imagine that we would have to have probably close to 10,000 clients globally. Obviously, it's not doable within this year as we just passed, uh, or we'll, uh, we'll report this probably early next week. But um uh but 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 yeah we we uh, the quarter um the, the goal for 2018 was to get close to 3000 clients so again i i probably can say if we pass this or not but you'll learn early next week as we release the um our stock exchange report um so yeah, uh, but but the overall goal is to become a leader in this space. This is um, something we've been preaching all along. So uh, yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> Thanks, Wukash. He's inviting me to for a good kebab. Always always happy to to to, to hit the good kebab. Okay, uh, another question. Um, what is your opinion uh, will be main factor to sell products and services in social media in 2019? Uh, a question from Mateusz. So it's um, it's pretty difficult to choose one channel that will be game-changing uh, channel in 2019 specifically uh, since different channels work for different industries. Uh, I, I can probably talk through our own experience and through our own plans. Our plans for 2019 are um, pretty much more of what we've been doing in past years. So more content marketing. We've been really successful with content marketing. We have over, the, over a thousand signups organically through content we create within our blog. So we see that this is 
pretty much booming. Uh, we see that it's super scalable because there's pretty much infinite number of keywords, topics that you can target with your content marketing. Content marketing essentially, so blog posts, uh, reports, uh, specific landing pages. We are now testing um, um, a longer uh, format, so uh, not a short blog posts, uh, but pretty much a compilations, pretty much um, uh, this, uh, guidelines and, and, and longer uh, posts that uh, supposedly work well. We can see more and more uh, shift towards mobile um, traffic and um, through, uh, we can see that, that there, there's more and more shift within Google algorithm to promote um, the domains and blogs that are really well um, uh, optimized towards, uh, towards mobile. Uh, so, uh, that would be one thing, um, more of content marketing. We hire more content managers. Um, we also try to replicate what we've been doing globally and what we've been pretty successful with globally to do on local markets as well. Um, so not only obviously Poland, but which is our mother uh, country, but uh, also uh, other regions. We've been pretty successful with uh, a lot of conversion and sales uh, in uh, South America. Uh, so we've been, um, we, we will likely try to experiment a little bit with uh, Spanish content, Spanish uh, remarketing ads, etc. Another thing that's that that's likely will be big for, um, uh, will be a, a big point within our marketing um, strategy for 2019 is uh, YouTube. Um, this uh, live stream is one of the examples, but uh, we've, um, promoted one of our um, team members to uh, you, you could say uh, our own youtuber at large so we'll have um uh, one of the content managers has become a pretty much a, a, a brand new for youtuber so she'll be uh creating uh content uh, specifically for youtube since youtube has become you know second largest search engine uh you know looking through uh, benchmarks like neil patel on youtube it's getting us some serious traction. Uh, it's a pretty similar um, uh, case with podcasts. So, you know, you can redistribute the content that you create for YouTube as a podcast on SoundCloud, Spotify. We can see that podcasts are booming in the US. Uh, it sounds funny because uh, like podcasts booming, it's, it's, it's like uh, the year of mobile, right? That uh, for years, every other year was supposed to be the, the year of mobile and uh and and, and yeah we can see this um in, in in podcasts as well that even though they were already pretty popular right now they are booming in the us and you can see that the, the, they will be booming in poland as well and in in any pretty much other region so we'll probably try to uh, create content for youtube but we'll also redistribute this within um a podcast platform so that would be another big thing within our uh, marketing strategy uh, there's probably more uh, we'll probably experiment with some online uh, events we uh, also think about uh, having our own online conference um, to, to test how this works in terms of content creation in terms of building relationships with influencers things like this so we'll, we'll see but this is probably something we plan for uh, second part of the year since the first part is Pretty uh, devoted towards social media marketing world conference, where we, uh, which will attend uh, the influencer report that is our annual report for uh, listing uh, top influencers all over the world based on numbers. So, so yeah, um, that, that that that's that, that's it for us. Um, let me go through um, another questions. Hey everyone, there's more people joining live stream. Super happy to have you here. Uh, uh, a lot of people are asking why I'm doing this in English, uh, especially since my English is not that superb, I would say. Uh, I, to be honest, I was super broken whether to do this in English or in Polish, but um, the, since the uh, majority of my followers, uh, especially on Facebook, are po Polish people, right? So um, I, I would like... To for this content to be um, uh, widely accessible, not only in Poland, but sometimes 
uh, even by a chance I managed to say something smart and hopefully this can uh, help someone in other places uh, uh, on earth. And what Brent24 taught me is that you should aim globally uh, straight away. Um, we, we never imagined that we would have a clients from places like we have right now, like over 100 countries. And um, so, so with every new effort that I that I make, uh, and same with this channel, I, I try to aim globally. Same with photography, I, I I post my photos on on Instagram in English, and I can see that it's working. There are people <laughs> buying my photos in Australia, uh, which is super cool. And so, thank uh, hopefully this this channel, even though it's uh, dominated by Polish people, which is fantastic as well, um, will at some point become more and more international. So uh, another question, uh, bah, 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 um, what's, your, what's, what's my opinion on, on IGTV? Is this, yeah, it, it, this one is three. Obviously it, it's Instagram TV. I was uh, hoping that it would become uh, this uh, big alternative to YouTube because competition is always good for, the industry, I, I I hate when when there's little competition because typically social networks are then going crazy. They are you know banning shadow banning people for silly stuff. So um, I, I had a ho high hopes for uh, Instagram TV, but so far it's it's I'm, I'm afraid it's not that good. One thing is that even with really popular Instagram profiles, they they are getting really small traction within within IGTV you have to promote it with your Instagram stories you have to promote it for your Instagram feed posts uh, otherwise it's not getting a significant traction so this is probably one of the challenge for Instagram to make the IGTV content more searchable because the power of YouTube is not the views you get within the first 24 hours from releasing your content probably with a vlog uh, type of content maybe yeah but when you're trying to create like evergreen content whether this is uh, how to grow your sales uh, or type of content or you know uh, travel to malta or travel to um, you know california type of content with youtube uh you uh, you aim for long term you you, you can create a content like this and get um, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of views after initial traction through hashtags, through their search, which is super power powerful. With Instagram, not so much. You get some initial views through um, through through IGTV, uh, maybe all for, from your stories, but then it's gone. All the all the uh, views you get within your video on IGTV, you get through your own profile, which is not a lot typically, even for a large profile. So we are yet to see value in IGTV, but it's it. Uh, you know, I have a fingers crossed uh, for for this platform since um, since I, I invest in Instagram a lot as well. But uh, but but mostly because I, I would like to to have the competition. But so far, um, not so much. Um, yep. Uh, what's next? Uh, what do you think will happen with Twitch? Is it going to be taking YouTube part of the market? That's really interesting because, um, Twitch, um, is all obviously a part of YouTube. It was acquired by YouTube some time ago, but it's, it's, uh, growing, um, out of this gaming, uh, gaming industry. So, likely we'll see more and more industry in, uh, industries investing. I already see some of the marketing influencers trying to leverage Twitch to uh, grow their audience, to reach to some new clients or new users. So um, again, same with uh, IGTV, so fingers are crossed because it will create some competition. Although again, this, this will be internal competition within YouTube, but sometimes even internal competition can be good for users or for, for, for us. Um, okay, uh, another question from Vitek. How do you deal with retention and customers at risk? So uh, essentially, how do we de deal with churn? Um, and uh, probably Emilia, so uh, the person right here, 
could could tell you a little more about this and feel free to ask her. It's Emily at brand24.com. She's um, managing uh, retention for uh for 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 brand24 uh, com and uh essentially we have a set of um we have a set of rules we have a set of a red flag metrics um so a red flags are essentially um actions or patterns that uh, are um describing users that are at risk of leaving us at some point so we we, we try to have an early warning um to and detect users who lose the engagement within the product, uh, they stop logging, they uh, uh, or they had a really short trial period, for example. So analyzing uh, people who already left us um, is is really powerful uh, practice and pa powerful tool because you can see uh, you can see patterns. You can see that um uh, for example their first session was really short one so or or, or their trial period which um, uh, es essentially the time for us uh, the, the average time to buy within brand 24 it's typically 25 30 days even though there's 14 trials uh 14 days trial only which is weird because so 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 that the purchase time should be um, shorter than the trial period, but it's not because people essentially need some time to to get a, uh, an ex, uh, accept within their company to to to, to spend money uh, on the product like ours, etc. So essentially, it's twenty five days on average, and um, if 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 it's much shorter than this, then straight away this client is at risk. If there's little contact with a customer, if there's little data that they got from Brand24, and if we see the decline in number of mentions that they got, so maybe the campaign finished and they will stop, uh, their need to, to use a product like ours will uh, essentially stop. So we have to contact them and we have to pitch them other applications of our product. So. So essentially, it's it's a lot of red flag metrics, and you can get those red flag metrics just by observing people who already left. Um, but what's really powerful, and if you're trying to do the next level of uh, uh, retention analysis and churn analysis, I would recommend uh, trying out uh, uh, some data warehouse. We use a, a product called Clupio. We import data from all the uh, let's say analytics platforms you use. So uh, obviously Google Analytics, Heap Analytics, a lot of products that we use out there, Hotjar, our own CMS, a lot of tools. Uh, we combine the data in Clueview and we try to look for patterns. And uh, trying to look for patterns is, 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 is powerful because uh, even if you sit down and you watch hundreds of sessions, you typically lose the big picture. You typically don't see the big picture, and you uh, you don't see this uh, sometimes small actions that are uh, specifically correlated with people then leaving the product or leaving early. Um, and yeah, that's you could probably write a books about the, how to prevent retain, uh, a churn and how to optimize your retention. It's also very important to look when the ret retention really happens. Um, so uh, to create a cohort analysis, so essentially a table in which you see how uh, many clients you lose after you sign them. So if they, if most of the clients leave you after a month or two months or three months, and then when you see when when do you have the biggest drop in clients uh, in or in retention, then you have to act. You have to act a little bit early to, to, to prevent this. So you have to intens intensify your communication of clients, um, um, you know, uh, uh, um, bef before uh, they leave you, because when they are leaving you, it's it's really difficult to to keep them uh, within your product. It's 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 pretty much too late already. So, so yeah, that's uh, that that's how we deal with retention. Um, another question. Um, oh, already some people from Brand Twenty Four joining. Um, <laughs> Uh, Kayetan, um, who's sitting uh, somewhere there asking questions. You could have just knocked on the window, uh, Kayetan, and asked this. <laughs> uh, do you think, uh, wh what do you think is, is the next big thing? Uh, uh, you know, uh, he read the um, 
analysis that show the CEO from Central Europe don't see the value in blockchain and business? Do you see potential adoption in this technology? Um, how would I say? How would I say this? Um, the blockchain technology, in essence, it's 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 uh, it's very promising. It's uh, the idea in the, the transparency that's uh, linked with blockchain is really cool. And but in theory, right? Uh, in practice, uh, at least from my observation, and uh, I wouldn't like to put all the you know um, to put all the uh, blockchain related projects in one basket because it would be unfair for so many of them but i don't see that much transparency in a lot of blockchain projects i i, I see a lot of uh, businesses that don't have a, a strong contact um uh, page so you're it's difficult for you to find any person that's responsible for a product that person that you can contact i don't know uh uh, get some feedback. Um, so there's, uh, although the blockchain um, is 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 built in, on, on on transparency, I don't feel like um, I feel like there's a lot of projects that 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 bring a bad reputation towards this uh, technology because uh, specifically lack of transparency. So um, right now. Uh, I, I don't see that much um, application uh, w within our industry, although we had some ideas uh, in uh, related to data collection. So essentially uh, how Brand24 works is we are a search engine. Um, so we have our own crawlers that go through the web and collect information for our, so our clients don't have to do it manually. Um, so the idea would be to uh, somehow uh, combine this with, um, with with how people are are, are browsing websites. So, um, like, I'm not sure if you're familiar. I'm sure you guys are familiar with products like Similar Web, where they analyze traffic within the um, browsers uh, for some, some partnerships, and and then they estimate the the size of the domains, uh, how much traffic specific addresses getting so it would be cool to have some sort of uh, our own information like this mm, it, it takes a lot of effort takes a lot of time but it it sounds like something that would be um could, that, that would be specifically and 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 very nicely um related to blockchain and you can use blockchain to to, to create such a platform or uh, such a data enrichment um uh, tool or, or or just technology that would make our product better. So we had these ideas, but uh, so far it's 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 not like the top priority, I would say. Mm, okay, I can see a lot of conversation within you guys. Uh, you know, uh, you, you can burn a lot of. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Uh, would I recommend user.com? Yes, I would recommend user.com. I have recommended them on number of occasions we uh we're not using them to full extent yet we're not it's not our main marketing automation product um we use this uh, within several of our side projects already so why haven't we switched to user.com yet uh it's because switching marketing automation platform which for product like ours is essentially a, it's our own C mix of CRM, email marketing, uh, and live chat tool. It's it's super tricky. And, and it's so many factors that we would have to take into consideration while switching this kind of product. Um, and uh, so, so we have to do this in a way that's very smooth and, and uh, uh, pretty much unnoticeable for our clients. So the plan is um, to, 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 to use this within some of our side projects, then possibly we can try this out on the, one of the language versions of our product and then possibly roll out this kind of product for, because as much as I uh, promoted Intercom, which is again, our major marketing automation platform, 
I really, I'm not really a big fan of what they're doing right now. Uh, they've, um, uh, they are definitely a leader in this space. They have, have a lot of money. They have a lot of funding. They have a lot of customers. And it feels like at some point they've, um, uh, they've lost this customer uh, focus, I would say. Uh, we had this um, really not really great experience with them where essentially overnight they've doubled the pricing and they were like, yeah, we've doubled your pricing if you want to stay pay the double or just, uh, you know, get lost. Um, maybe not in this specific words, but, uh, but it would, I, I hate, I hate it when companies do this. I, we would never change a, a pricing for existing customers, no matter what we, we, we changed pricing several times. This is a regular practice within SaaS companies, but you change pricing for new clients. You never, you know, you, and therefore you promote clients that purchased before the typically uh, uh, the, before prices went up. So so when you change pricing for existing clients, I, I really hate it. Um, uh, specifically since we were already paying a lot, we pay thousands of dollars a month for for intercom. So it's super expensive, um, but it's not changing that fast. And you can see that in a lot of ways, user engage is. Is is intercom possibly intercom killer because it has so many um, so many features that you would imagine uh, within the platform like this. So it's a combination of marketing automation plus uh, a tool like Keep that has a funnels analytics, and this is something we really miss in intercom. Uh, although to be fair, there were times where user.com were um, uh, kind of um, I felt like at least from what I've heard in, in the industry, it felt like they were, um, um, uh, let's say, the victim of their own success. So they they had so many, uh, they, they had so many interests in their product that, that they were unable to, to cope with the, um, uh, with, with the demand, you would say. Uh, but at the, at the moment, I feel like they are as stable as any uh, a really good platform out there, so uh, they are as stable as Intercom. Um, I wonder what's the deliverability rate uh, for both uh, pr products uh, for email marketing because with so many clients using Intercom, you would imagine that Intercom um, is, is is hitting a spam folder a lot uh, more often than, uh, than, than than the smaller companies. But then maybe Intercom has a way to do to, to you know to talk with Google and maybe get some sort of a deal that they don't go to spam folder. Uh, anyway, th this competition is interesting, and again, just like with YouTube and um, IGTV, it's 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 good for for us as clients. Uh, right, another question. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Do you have a lot of troubles from sites blocking your crawlers? Um, to be honest, not at all. Apart from you know, obviously, uh, Facebook has become a super challenge super big challenge for any monitoring company because they've just restricted access to the data which we try to um uh to break down to clients because they they, they don't care they just want the data from facebook and 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 if they you know, don't don't get it they have uh you know they hold a grudge against the monitoring company not the facebook which uh turned down the access and um uh, so it's obviously it has a lot of political uh um background you know with cambridge analytica and uh, so but but i believe that facebook data will become more accessible but only public facebook data so you, so facebook will professionalize access to um uh, fan pages uh, fan page data so you'll be able to browse uh, uh, most of the public posts on fan pages but so far um, they are yet to release a paid um api uh, f with search function, so, um, so, 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 which would be a really good news for any monitoring company. But the good news is that all the monitoring companies are, you know, uh, have the same problem with Facebook, so uh, limiting the data access. But outside the platforms like like this, we rarely get someone that 
uh, wants uh, to be excluded from our parses. We, but we, uh, on the other hand, we get a lot of requests to be included in, in our search. So we can see a lot of requests, for example, because um, being visible within uh, results in Brand24 ma makes it easy uh, easier for you to uh, to get uh, you know uh, revenues from your blog from your site uh, because essentially one of the major applications of Brand24 is to uh, learn where you can spend money where your clients you know reside uh, all over the web so essentially. Uh, we have a lot of platforms that are asking us to um, to to be more accurate with monitoring the, the, their platform because they want more exposures within brands that use uh, monitoring tools to find um, their clients. So, um, so yeah, that that's uh, that's it with our with our uh, crawlers. Um, <laughs> another question from is 2019 and a year of mobile. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Um, although we've just we, we've just done an analysis on how many users uh, at Brand24 use a mobile app, and it was uh, only twenty to thirty percent um, use mobile app, which is mm, surprising, really, because uh, for me, mobile, since we've launched mobile app, it has become the major touch point with the brand with the product, and we are now will likely invest more in mobile app and probably the mobile app will become a standalone app so you will be able to purchase brand 24 and just you know pay subscribe whatever for mobile app without ever visiting the dashboard which the dashboard itself will always be the best way to use the product because all the analytics all the features but all in all uh I, yeah I, I i see a lot of potential here yeah <laughs> any other questions 30 minutes already wow Time flies. You can see a lot of work. Um, people, pe people are at Brand Twenty Four office in Wroclaw. They're trying to look professional in the background. Uh. <laughs> Another question from Shamek: um, What did you use um, to measure UX, uh, probably UX efficiency? Um, so the tools we would use uh, essentially are Heap Analytics, mm, Hotjar, and Google Analytics. And now, again, Cluvio, which is the data warehouse where we combine data from all the platforms. The um, Typically, what I would recommend for if, if, if you guys are trying to um, improve your usability, and you know, improving usability sounds like something you should... Uh, something for large companies or something to optimize your revenues you know further along the way but optimizing your usability of your product of your website of your landing page it determine it, it, it is a matter of life or death for many startups so uh, so you should do this as early as possible because if you are running a new project, and if you just released a new project or or a sub project, we've just released, uh, for example, uh, our own affiliate program, and whenever you release something new, you have to know if it's you know if it's working. If you're getting tons of sales, awesome. It's maybe usability optimization is not a priority, but typically your first shot at matching clients' expectations, it's not a good shot. Typically, you have to have few interactions be be between you. Really, your product fits. Um, you hit the product market fit, what's called. Uh, so the point where where people really like your product. But um, so so essentially, I would really recommend this to any project. Um, uh, checking your usability, and it sounds fancy, but essentially, you can start with just looking for pages within your product that has uh, that have a high bounce rate or exit rate. You can check this in Google Analytics. There's a, a really simple section. If you go to content site content and, and, and look through all the you know exit pages or landing pages uh, and, and and then sort by um, bounce rate bounce rate or exit rate, you will find some unusual 
websites or some unusual numbers, you will find that uh, essentially you have some domains or subsites that are causing you a, a lot of people to bounce off your website, and then you can react and optimize them. Um, so, so that would be the simplest way. A, a more advanced way would probably be to create funnels. Um, I, I don't recommend Google Analytics for, for, for funnels because you have to know really well what, what you want to track. Um, what's cool about tools like Heap Analytics is that you can, or Amplitude, which is, Amplitude is free up to, I think, 10,000 sessions or 100 sessions, 100,000 sessions. So for most businesses out there, especially SaaS businesses, um, I would recommend Amplitude because it's free to some extent, to, to, to some point, and it's really powerful. Uh, and uh, and then you can they, they they just track everything every action of your users and then so you can then create funnels even if you haven't created them before you can analyze data historical data and and then you while creating funnels you can you can see how many people you essentially lose within each step i would really recommend complementing this knowledge with tools like hodger where you literally see what people do within your product so you see every mouse movement every form that they fill what they type in the keyword everything like you would be sitting behind them uh, um, yeah uh, and, uh, and and this combination is pretty good because um, funnels allow you to see the big picture uh, but it's also good to see with this scope uh, to look into details with tools like Hodger, because trust me, users use your product different uh, in a different way that you imagine they use your product. So, so that would be my recommendation. Um, so, what do I think about the breaking point for podcasts? Are they going to become the next big thing? Yeah, I I think that they they are already a big thing, but they will they will be. I, I believe that they will be radio station kill, killers in, in, in essence. Um, and maybe not, I'm not the best example and, and I'm not the, the, the let's say, the, the majority, how, how the majority of people behaves, but typically most of my time spent, um, you know, uh, looking for the internet. I can, uh, the, the most of the content I consume is via YouTube or podcasts or audiobooks so listening or watching i rarely read um uh, any blog posts or, or something um which is a bad thing i not sure if this is uh something i should really brag about but but just this is how i do things i i, I rarely read these days um unless there the content has no you know uh, version of no transcription to audio um, or no YouTube, um, I, you know, whenever, and th this is not only related to marketing or photography, anything I do, I, I need to change the bulb in my car. I don't Google this. I go straight to YouTube to look for the videos to, to, to walk me through the process. And, so, so I, I really believe that combination of YouTube podcasts, uh, platforms like SoundCloud, you know, iTunes, Spotify, will be a big, big thing. And I, I already can see this. You know, uh, last year I've, I, I, I was uh, privileged to, um, to, to have an interview with Michal Shafransky, um, which is really popular. Uh, let's say a podcaster and a blogger in Poland. And it, it's really amazing how engaged his audience is, and and you know, uh, him sharing a link to my you know uh, Facebook or Instagram uh, got me thousands of people instantly adding me to subscription or adding to to to, to follow. So, and and I've never seen this um, engagement with any social and any type of uh, marketing channel, even on. Facebook, even on, you know, uh, dig.com when it used to be uh, alive. Uh, I've never seen so much, uh, so, so many people. So, so you can see that there's, uh, there's a high engagement and I can see that um, a lot of podcasters are also um, uh, doing promos in a, in a really quality way, which is 
which their audience um, appreciates. So the ads that you listen through the podcast are typically not uh, not like the radio ads that are you know that you instantly know that there's a distance in that, but they are uh, really smoothly incorporated into the uh, in, in the into the podcast, which is really cool as well. Um, so yeah, I, I I believe that they are already be big thing, and um, you can see through this live stream and through all the efforts I I, I make to build a, a brand, a personal brand as much as the company brand on YouTube, um, that 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 would be my uh, strong suggestion uh, for 2019. Okay, another question. Uh, can you see any social platform that's huge in the world but just raising pollen mm. i think that that um i don't think that poland has their own quora um and quora was quora is superb so, source of traffic for um english uh, based content we've been getting a lot of signups a lot of traction from Quora and I'm yet to see um, a, a source like this um, in Poland or in any local market so um, so yeah uh, yeah that, that would be it <laughs> um, don't think that there's any uh, or uh, and to be honest, I, I wish, I think we are due to see any new social network. You know, uh, I, I wish we would see some new social network, some new Instagram that, you know, wouldn't be acquired by Facebook straight away. And, 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 and that would create some sort of a competition because right now there's little competition in social. That's, that's, that's problematic. You have Facebook and Instagram, which are one thing. And hopefully, you know, YouTube will, more and more uh, has is, is becoming more and more you can see that they are youtube stories right now you can see that you know uh, you can create youtube posts like you would, like you could with any other social network um but yeah we we i would really love to have more competitive competition in this space um I, i'm not really, really that big a fan of twitter um um don't know why. Uh, it has some pros and cons, specifically when whenever there's something going on. Twitter is and and I use Twitter for uh, tracking all of the football related related news stories. But um, other than that, mm, uh, for for business purposes, I can I on on the other hand, I can see a lot of impact on LinkedIn. Um, I've recently shared some of the statistics for one of my recent videos and LinkedIn got the most views out of the all social networks that I run. And views is tricky because uh, there are different methodologies within different social networks. So views on LinkedIn are not the same like views on YouTube or Twitter or Facebook. And it's likely that LinkedIn is um, is counting every view. Uh, you know, after let's say five seconds of watching uh, the video, they they are like, okay, that's a view. Uh, for YouTube, it's probably like I don't know, fifty percent or seventy percent of of video watched. Then it's a view. Uh, with um, yeah, with with LinkedIn, not so much. But but I was still blown away by number of engage, but by number of likes, number of comments, the the engagement on LinkedIn. And what's cool about LinkedIn is that this the content lives for weeks or even months after original publication. I'm still getting a lot of traction on one of the posts from six months ago on on uh, on LinkedIn. And I'm not talking about their pulls platform to to, to write content, but just regular uh, posts on on LinkedIn that got me. Um, uh, thousands of, of of likes and views um so uh i started to to to, to use linkedin more I, I would say um e even though i have less subscribers and less um connections on linkedin than i have on facebook or on twitter I, for the video i've i've mentioned uh i got way more engagement 
on um, on LinkedIn than on Facebook, uh, not to mention views. So it's really interesting to see uh, that LinkedIn has become, maybe LinkedIn will become this competitor and especially w within business space for uh, for to, to Facebook or uh, other platforms. So yeah, fingers crossed. All right. Any other questions? <laughs> okay, okay, guys. I think we're good. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. I mean, uh, this is typically what YouTubers say. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate this and, and all. But I, I really do. I mean, um, I really invest a lot of time in, in, in YouTube right now in business uh, channel on YouTube. And I really, really appreciate all your comments, the time you've spent here. Um, and yeah, um, hopefully I'll be able to make this thing more often. I'm, I'm getting a lot of questions on, on Facebook, uh, email, you know, LinkedIn, uh, sort of like mentorship type questions where people are asking some specifics w w related to their products. I would love, really love to, 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 to establish like a platform where they could ask the, the, these questions publicly because a lot of times I see that the answers I give them, they, they those answers could be easily translated to any type of business. So hopefully um, I, I'll, I'll be doing this live streams more often and I'll push people um, asking me questions via private messages to do this within those live streams. Obviously not everybody because some, 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 some questions are um, more, let's say, private, especially when people are asking how to deal with stress, Worrying and etc. But but yeah, may, may, maybe uh, maybe I'll uh, I'll make them anonymous uh, or, or some of them anonymous and still answer uh, here here. All right, thanks again. Uh, see you soon. It's Thursday, but yeah, what the hell? Have a wonderful uh, weekend. It starts tomorrow, and uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. <laughs>